Oh, hello everybody, and welcome to the, a new edition of Under the Needle. This this Sunday we are going to finish making our bucket hat. Last week we got all of our measurements, we downloaded the pattern, cut it out, and we got all of our pieces cut out. There were three pieces to the pattern. Oops, let me go to there we go wrong camera <laughs> we had this piece this is for the brim this is for the band that sits this piece actually goes up like this this is the brim and then this cut on the fold makes the the very top part of the hat so hope everyone's had a wonderful week Welcome back from those that were watching the episode last night. That was our stone log cabin quilt from Quilts in Italy series. And that will review again next week. Alrighty. So, let's see. We're going to get started. Um, the first step is that we cut two pieces on the fold out of this. It was like this. this piece here so this piece that is cut on the fold right there so for the outer fabric you cut two and for the lining we cut two as well so what it means is that if you use the same fabric or two different fabrics this hat could be 100% reversible so I ended up, here's my two outer fabrics. So now we're going to put right sides together. And we're going to do a, a one centimeter uh, seam. So on most sewing machines, the needle plates have markings for both inches and metric. So this would be 1 cm or 10 mm. I've got my beam, I have a needle, uh, a laser guide beam on this machine that I'm on and I have it set for 10, 10 millimeters to the right of the needle for my seam allowance. I'm going to swap my camera, okay, and now I'm just going to do two seams right here and I'm going to press them open as I go, okay, let me get my ironing station ready. So you can see how I do that. And I've got two units. So I'm going to have an inner and an outer fabric. And I'm going to do that with both of these. Both of these fabrics. Do, do, do. And. We get that first seam going here. Thread my needle. Why aren't you threading? Oh, that's fine. There we go. Okay. And then I have my stitch length. I have it set on 1.8. I only need it set to two. So I have a two millimeter stitch length, straight stitch, with a one centimeter slash 10 millimeter, um, 10 millimeter seam allowance. It's extremely close to 3 8 of an inch, the 10 millimeter slash one centimeter seam allowance. The instruction, the pattern for this is in, was is from Australia, so there's no inch equivalent done to it. It was all done with one centimeter uh, seam allowance. God, I hope that made sense. Okay. Hi, Sandra. Good morning. Okay. And I'm going to stitch down this first seam. Okay, that one's done. I'm going to change my presser foot. I do not have the right presser foot on. I had my, my quarter inch piecing foot on and that's not good for this. So I'm just going to use the, the J foot that came with this machine. It's just your general purpose foot. There we go. 
Get that foot on there. All righty. Now we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. I forgot to post a link to this in our Facebook group. If anyone wanted to join, come over from Facebook. So I meant to do that and I just totally slipped my mind on that one. my outer one see I did my two seams here and here one centimeter then I'm gonna go over here to my iron and press them open but I'm gonna do the inner fabric as well so I I used um, cut all this out of used blue jeans <clears throat> so one of the jeans was was much lighter than the other one so I'm just gonna try to make sure I don't mix my pieces up and so my my reversible denim hat bucket hat and one side will have a darker denim and the other side will have a lighter denim and since it's reversible i can wear it either way okay and let's get another one going and then we're gonna hop over to the other camera and I'm gonna press these four seams open that I just created. Okay. Now we are ready to press our seams open. Let me swap that camera. There we go. Alrighty. And now I'm just going to lay these out and press them open. This is something, boy howdy, especially with denim to reduce bulk, this really does need to be done. I'm going to give it, using my steam on this to really press that nice and flat. There we go, there's that one. And we'll swap this over and do this one here. Just try to position it so it's on camera good for everybody. And then for the other parts, I'm not going to move the camera so you can see this part. I just wanted you to see basically how it's done. And when I say press the seam open, for those of you that have never done this before, this is what pressing a seam open means when someone says that. Okay. There we go. That one's pressed open. Now I'm going to do the other part. I have two, two pieces like this. This is the brim of the hat. Okay. Finger press it open, then I'll grab my iron and do that to both of them. It'll just make, I think it'll make it go a little bit easier. Just take a little bit of time to do that. Okay. So, this is the one we're doing first. I was just seeing where that camera angle was. And I'm just going to hold that iron down. one to reheat. I've inadvertently turned that one off for some silly reason. But next, the next step, we're going to layer the brim together, right sides together, and we're going to sew around the outer part of the brim, the, the outer edge of it. Get this pressed. Okay, that's good. Go over that one again. 
one more time here. Now we're good to go. All right. So, wearing the hat, let me swap my camera. Okay. So when we wear this hat, you can see the two differences in my denim right there. Okay. So when you're wearing this hat, <clears throat> I wouldn't want one of these seams to be coming right out in the center above my eyes. So I'm going to call the, the, the seam lines on these two rings that we just made. This is going to be my side seam. For lack of a better word, this is my side seam. And if you notice on this piece right here, this, this is the piece. This right here, this line that would be a side seam and then on our brim we'll also have side seams to line up it'll you'll see when once we get to that so next i'm going to layer this right sides together i'm going to match those seams up first okay i'm just going to put those together and i'm going to put a clip in it Since this is denim, I have decided to use Wonder Clips simply because it's a lot of bulk to put those other pins through. So there's one that's right there at the side seam. Down here is another one. Matching those seam lines. Okay. Perfect. Now then, I'm also going to put a few around the edge. So as I'm sewing, I have no guesswork to do and I make one big circle. So where I'm clipping at is where I'm going to sew at next with a one centimeter seam allowance. Okay. There's that one. And that one right there. And I'm not being perfect with this because as I am stitching, I'm going to line it up even better. Okay? hope that makes sense as well. <clears throat> Hi, Sandra. Hi, Linda. Oh, uh, Sandra. Linda, would you mind posting a link to this in our Facebook group, our Altair Angels group? I forgot to put one in today for that, if you don't mind. Sandra, if you belong to our face, our Altair Angels group, our Baby Lock Angels group on Facebook, that's the group I'm, I'm referring to. Thank you so much. All righty. Okay, so next we are going to stitch this. all the way around the outside edge here where I've clipped this big circle. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter where you start. I'm gonna start at those, quite honestly, near the, near the side seams. And I'm just going to line up. I have my laser light set on this Altair at 13.5 millimeters. That gives me a 10 millimeter or one centimeter seam allowance. European and Australian patterns are generally in um, metric. So that's why I'm referring to this so much. This is a one centimeter ten or 10 millimeter seam allowance. I'm just gonna take my time and go all the way around. We're making the brim of the hat. As you can see, it's it's it all just kind of lines up nice and neat. And since that's all a biased edge, it's going to fit together pretty good. But there is a lot of pressing to do to make this job of assembling this hat so much easier. And I'm going, the next step will be, after doing this, we're going to turn it, I'm going to clip 
<clears throat> I'm gonna clip to the stitching where I'm sewing now. And then when we turn it inside out, it's gonna make it lay super duper flat and will help reduce any bulk. I'm jumping ahead of myself now. See how easy that is to do? Easy peasy. This is simple to do. And if you follow the printed instructions that came with this pattern, I mean, it is literally a very well written pattern. They have some wonderful clothing patterns I'm wanting to make as well. We'll do that one here. done with this scene. And there we go. I just went over my creep where I started at about one inch. About about one uh, two centimeters if you want to call it like that. But there we go. Now we have a big our brim stitched together. I'm going to open it up briefly so you can see what I'm talking about. There's the this is this is the right side. This is the wrong side of the fabric. But see that seam line? So before I turn it, I'm gonna clip with my scissors all the way around. And all I'm doing, hi Belinda. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just going to clip right up to my stitching line without going into it, just like that. See there? And I'm going to do that about every half inch all the way around. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's zoom this in. And then I'm just going to lay it out flat as I go. And I'm just going to start clipping approximately a half an inch, a finger's width, whatever you're, whatever you're, you're comfortable with. Okay. Just being careful not to stitch through that seam you just created. That's all it is. Now when we get to these big heavy seam, seam, side seams, I'm going to show you how to reduce the bulk there. Be a little bit different. Okay. So, there's that double seam. There's, right here, there's four layers of denim or any fabric that you'd have in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut into it like a, I'm going to cut out a triangle. I'm going to clip right up to the center seam. I'm going to try to. I think these scissors will do it. I'm going to do a little, be really careful. There we go. Okay, boy, this so I don't know where my other my big heavy duty Kai scissors are. <laughs> that made it a little bit easier, but I'm gonna get it. There we go. And see how I just kind of notched that out right there, right there. Okay, but that's what you want to do where those seams are. And there's only two of them to have to do that to. Otherwise, just clip it around. Easy peasy. Once again, the thread I'm using is Madeira 40 weight arrow quilt thread. Same thread in the bot top and in the bottom. Same color. Try 
I had to be careful. I clipped into my seam in one spot. I just have to be careful when I turn it because we're going to, after we turn it, we're going to top stitch around the very edge of it before we move to the next step. But <clears throat> first, of course, this is the brim. We assemble the two different brims, inner and outer fabric. Press those seams open right there. Then you layer them right sides together and circle, stitch around the outside perimeter of the brim. I'm using a two millimeter stitch length. And once that seam is made all the way around with a one centimeter seam, I'm then going to clip into, I'm going to clip, <laughs> what I'm doing right now, I'm clipping the seam right up to, but not including, my stitching. You don't want to cut through your stitching. And what that does, as you'll see here in just another couple of minutes, I'm going to turn it and press it, okay? Now, my practice when I did, I did out of flannel. It was super easy to do. Something tells me it'll be maybe just a little bit more of a challenge with this. And I'm just going to clip this just a slightly different way. And clip that off right there like that straight across. That helped reduce some of that bulk. Trying to keep my this in camera view. Glanced up and saw it was just a hair off. So right here on this corner of this table, okay. So Belinda, you can do the V clip. Probably you should. It's gonna be harder to do in denim. But I'm just making a straight clip and it seemed to work very well for me. However, it would be better probably to do a V instead of a straight clip like I'm doing. But it worked well for me on my sample one that I made, my mock-up. So I think it's okay just to do a straight cut in. Okay, clippy, come on, clip. There we go. We're almost there. <laughs> okay. Oh, hi, Roz. It's so nice to meet you. Welcome. Oh, Sandra, I, I didn't check it this morning. I will, I will click on that. I will totally click and admit you to the group once we finish this session here. Okay. Getting there. Alrighty. Two more clips. Okay. Now, as you can see, when I hold this up, <clears throat> see how I've clipped all of that? That's what you want to do. It makes it so much easier to turn and press. So, let me back this out a bit. Okay. So, next, we're going to turn and press it. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to turn it like this first. <clears throat> And as I'm turning, I'm pulling out, not super hard, but just to get that seam all the way out. Because this will make turning it so much easier. I got my finger underneath here. My other finger is right here and I'm pushing up on that seam because I'm just stretching it out, not really stretching, just getting that really out nice and level on both sides. 
I really had to press when I did it out of flannel, but I tell you what, it won't take much pressing for this one. <laughs> it wants to hold its form. That's why I did not put any interfacing in this brim, because two layers of denim is pretty, should give it enough body for it to hold its shape. We'll find out towards the end. If not, I have a fix for that. There is a fix for it. Okay, there we go. That's all turned out. And now, before I go over to my iron, I'm going to clip it just a little bit ways around so while I'm ironing, I have something to gauge by where I'm at. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, you. Here we go. Just going to put in a few preemptive clips. might be overkill but I'll just be a little more comfortable with the iron if I have it all laid out like this first. Okay. It's really holding out there well so check it out people. See there? Okay. And there's the faded side. <laughs> Those jeans were a bit more worn than the other ones, than the darker ones were. I found some really cool blue jeans at um, a thrift store that has all this fancy embroidery on the back pockets and stuff. I'm saving that pair to make like a messenger bag out of. We'll be doing that on here in the future as well. Okay, that's all clipped all the way around. See there? Now I'm gonna go over here to the iron and press it. <clears throat> and I'll swap that over so you can get a peek. There we go. So, I'm gonna press it this way. Simply because I can. And what I'm doing, I'm just laying it out nice and flat right here. Okay, I'm just going to take my iron and press it. I'm going to go all the way around the outside edge of it and press that grip down. And I'm using my fingers to fill of it, make sure the, the edges are as even as I can get them. Yeah, this, these little pressing mats by your machine are really handy, especially when you're PCing quilt blocks. But for something like this, I tell you, it's totally easier to do at an ironing board. And my ironing board is all the way in another room, so that's just not going to happen. Plus, there's no camera at it. Okay, let's get that out. there to where we started. There's also a lot of top stitching to do between steps that help hold the shape of the hat together and all that fun stuff. And you'll see what I mean. Because our next step is to top stitch around the edge where I'm pressing at. I'm going to use a two millimeter stitch length with the thread that I've been using. OK. 
Okay. There we go. That's now done. And we'll go back over here. There we go. Now, I'll need those later. Oops. Now I'm going to top stitch down. This is the outside of what I'm calling the outside is the dark. The inner, the lighter color is going to be my inside fabric. Well, the pattern it refers to it as the lining. And here I am going to I am going to follow the quarter inch mark. I'm going to stitch that down about a quarter inch. You can do it right at the very edge if you want to. That's what the pattern calls for, but I think I'm going to do it a quarter inch away because there's markings and it's easier to follow. This is this part is as far as where you're going to start and stop at or how large or where you're going to top stitch from is what I'm trying to say is totally up to you, but I'm going to do mine a quarter inch away from the seam. Okay, and we got two millimeters. And we're going to zoom in. There we go. Now I'm not following my, my laser light I have set up. I have that set up for my, my seam allowance. So I'm following the quarter inch mark on my bobbin cover. Or if you have, a, you could use a piece of tape, anything at all you need to set it at a quarter inch. And we're just going to take our time and go all the way around. Try to keep it as even as possible. And all that fun stuff. This would, another thread that would really be good for the top stitching would be like a 30 weight thread, a little heavier, but I'm using a 40. It would be okay. I'm not using the contrasting thread. This one is a, a blue variegated, so it should blend in fairly well, I would think. And I have a size 90 needle in. Okay. I'm just watching that quarter inch mark on my bobbin cover to keep that as even as possible as I go all the way around this outside edge of this half of the grip. Okay. gives the edge a super nice finish when you do this. And notice I have my needle set to stop in the down position. That helps keep those those start and stop marks where you have you see me doing that really invisible to the eye. Makes it super nice. Oh Stephanie, I'm using a Panasonic 360 cordless iron. Let me bring that in here, right here. It's got a, and it's really great for, for quilters because each, each end of it is pointed. It's also steam, super nice. <clears throat> it has a charger, uh, a recharging base you set it in, and that's an inside of the iron. It has a uh, reservoir for steam. I think there is a link in the description to this video if you want to take a closer look at that iron. I love it. I, it's the only one I use right next to my machine. I'm going to try to line this up as best as possible. 
super cool. There we go. Then I'm just going to cut it. And that step is done. Okay. So as you can see, now I have a nice edge. Totally invisible on the back, that thread is. Wow. But you can see here on the front, with that camera focus in, there is my quarter inch stitching all the way around the edge. And it gives it a nice, sharp, crisp edge on it here all the way around. Okay. <coughs> Alrighty, so next. Next is, I'm going to look at the instructions. So I do this in order. Okay. Next. Done that, done that. And we're going to do this one next. Okay. So next... <clears throat> We are going to start making the band and the and the top of the hat and sewing those seams together. We're just going to set our brim aside for just a moment. So the next thing to do <clears throat> is this piece right here. It says band on it. Okay. So you had to cut two on the fold. There's the fold line. Two for the outer, ten for the inner, two for the outer, two for the inner. And just like with the with the one the brim, we're just gonna open them up and we're just gonna match, put the right sides together and do a one centimeter seam down each side and press it open. So I have this one for my outer. seam this will be two okay then I have another one to make for the inside fabric same way right sides together and do a one centimeter seam on each side See, I think these would be pretty made out of quilting fabric also. If you were going to make one out of cotton, medium weight cotton quilting fabric, you'd want to put some sort of interfacing or stabilizer between the layers of the outside and inside fabrics. Because what that, unless you just want it super floppy, but what that would do, it would add a lot of firmness it adds some stiffness to the brim and everything you would not need to put that on this piece right here the band you won't need that this is what goes around your head and goes and goes up to the top of your head okay so next I have to press those seams open I'm not going to swap cameras on this one. Yeah, I will. There we go. There we go. I'm going to change the view of that just a little bit so you can get a little better look at it. There we go. Okay. And there's not really... It's, it's better to like offset these two seams and just press them through all layers. See how I did that? See where those two seams lie? And then I can just do them one at a time. And the reason is this is really not, doesn't have the diameter to it like the band does. It was easy to do, to press it with just one layer of fabric. Not as easy to do on this, this part of the hat. Just hold that in place. Let my iron heat a little bit. 
I have it set on um, Econo mode. I need to get it off of that. <clears throat> it just takes a very short heating time on this iron. It is super, super slow. There we go. Okay. And we'll go back to this side, do that one as well. set that up here to the side then we're going to press the next one okay. and now we're going <clears> to <throat> stagger that seam and press them open And we'll see at some point in this construction if I have to put a bigger needle in. I think my size 90 is going to do it all the way for this project. We'll see here shortly. <clears throat> Honestly, the longest, what takes the longest to make this is all the pinning and pressing. The sewing is really pretty fast and straight, straightforward on that. Okay, it's all nice and pressed. Yeehaw. I have two of those now. So we're not going to sew these two together. I know that doesn't make sense, but if I, this is the darker colored one. So I have two tops. Here's the pattern piece for the top laid on the fold line right here. And I've got this piece. It, cuts out a circle, right? And so what I'm going to do, see how it has on the top piece, there's that line right there. I snip that pattern with my scissors because what I'm going to do on this piece here, I'm going to fold it back over. I'm going to put my pattern on there. And I'm not going to clip it quite that deep, but I'm going to clip it just a right up to where the seam line would be and just clip it that way I now know that that is going to be a side seam. It's going to go to the side right there. I'm going to do that to both of them. That goes with that one. This one will go with that one. Because where the seam lines are, we've created on both of the previous two pieces, this is how we will line the very top of it up. Okay. Next, we have to assemble these two pieces right here. The outer piece and the lining slash inner piece. Okay. So, this is where it, it's going to take a little bit of time. Let's see here. Make sure I do this right. Yes. It's going to take a little bit of time to line this all up. And you always put right sides together. But see where I just clipped that with that pattern? I'm lining that right up to this side seam. This I'm actually going to pin. I won't have to do a lot of pinning. And I'm pinning. <clears throat> So I want to make sure that this, this stays right where I pin it. And I'll just feel better if it is. I'm going to do this on this little camera here. I just lined up that side seam with the little clip on the opposite side. Where I clipped it with the scissors. So there's that. And now, if you notice, it's pretty much going to fit together easy peasy. If you just line it up a little bit. The rest I will actually do 
I'm just going to put a few more pins in it all the way around. Oops. Oops. And it will actually just kind of fall in place as you place it around. That's really all there is to it. There's, there is a lot of prep work on this one. That's what I consider this is prep work. Ease that out some. I get it under the machine, it'll all just line right up. There we go. Now we're going to do that to the other side. Easy peasy. This is the part you can't rush. Then I'm going to do it to the second set of this. So this one actually is what I'm calling my lining. There it is all pinned together. And then once again, we'll just do a one centimeter seam all the way around the edge of it. So that one's pinned. Now I'm going to do the next one. So <clears throat> set it up like this. There's my two side seams and my two little slits I made right there. I'm gonna line those two up with the, the seams from the previous step. Right sides together. If you were making one of these out of batik fabrics, well, you know in a batik there's usually not a right side or a wrong side. So you have a little bit more leeway for error when you do one like that. So it's all good. This is only the second one of these, everybody, that I've made, okay? My first go-round that I showed you last week was a flannel mock-up of the finished hat. And I just thought it'd be really cool as a way to recycle old denim jeans to make really cool stuff out of. That side's done. everyone is having a happy holiday weekend. As you can see, this is what I'm doing for my holiday weekend, what I usually do. We will go out and watch the fireworks tomorrow night. I'm not sure if they're tonight or tomorrow night, Mike knows. <clears throat> I know one thing, it's hotter in blue places. Well, not as hot as it has been, but it is hot and humid outside. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
that tells me I need a drink of tea, but I did get all my pinning done, everybody. So there's the step I just did. I have the lining and the outer fabric pinned. Okay. I'm gonna swap my camera over. There we go. Get me a drink of my tea. And then once again, <clears throat> when I have my machine set at, I have it for a two millimeter stitch length center position. I have on this machine, I have this seam guide, which is a laser beam on this particular machine. I have it set for a one cent, a 10 millimeter, which would equal one centimeter. I have a one centimeter seam guide set up. I'm using what is called the J foot. It's our general purpose foot. Some people call it a zigzag foot. I'm just going to start it up. And you know what? <clears throat> Let me think here. Free arm. Now, this would not be the place to use the free arm. The last step is where we'll use that free arm at. Okay. So I'm just going to get this lined up so I can get it under the presser foot. Right there. Okay. I'm going to stick my needle down so now I can try to adjust this. So what I've got, I've got the, the round piece that you saw. I have it, I have this piece right here on the bottom like this and then I'm going to rotate it as I sew around the edge of it. That's how I'm going to do it. Let me check the, the, the comments here for just a second. Okay. Yes, Belinda, a pretty decorative stitch would be really cool too. Oh, Sandra, I have a link to it in my, um, at the bottom of the list here. I can't think of the brand of it. I've had this for quite a while. But yeah, those wool pressy mats are so awesome. Okay, so next I'm gonna do a one centimeter seam all around the edge on both pieces. I'm just gonna take my time. Just make sure as I go, I line all those edges up as best I can. Keeping that fabric nice and flat as I go under that foot. If you've done your pinning right, I tell you what, it just lines up perfectly. If you notice, I'm going right over my straight pins. You've heard me talk about it. That's those magic pins that I like to use. After I discovered those, I hardly, rarely use any others for sewing. But I still do use long arm pins um, when I'm at my quilting frame. These are too lightweight for that. See how easy that is? It's not that difficult. It looks, I know it's kind of, can be kind of intimidating to do something like this, but if you just take your time and pin it, that's the secret to success on this. And don't try to sew it fast. Just go slow all the way around and everything will work out just hunky-dory. We're going to press after this step again. <laughs> We're going to do a press on top stitch after these are done.
Okay, that one's done. I'm gonna take that all out. Do all, oops. <laughs> Where did that pin go? It went to right to the side. <laughs> I'm gonna take out all my pins and we're gonna move and do the next one. Patty, the pattern for this is a link to the pattern is in the description below the videos, the video on this. I have exactly where you can go purchase that pattern. It's not one, it's not my pattern. It's from a wonderful designer in Australia. And it says $5 on the website for the pattern, but that's in Australian daughter, dollars. So <clears throat> it actually amounted to like about the day I bought it $3.77 with the exchange rate. I did mine through PayPal. It did the exchange rate all on its own. It didn't have to worry about it. <clears throat> and once you purchase it, you just download it and print it out on your, your computer. The, the episode from last week, I showed how to do that, how to print it out. The, oh, the trick to printing them out is to print it actual size. And there's wonderful written instructions on how to do that with the pattern itself. As you can see, this is really not that difficult to do. It's just that I know it can be intimidating making a hat because it's really pretty cool to do, quite honestly. You, know, you could even, if you had a cutter quilt, you know, want a quilt with holes in it, and you wanted just to cut it up to use it in a garment or something, you could totally use or make your own quilted fabric to make one of these hats with. It'd look pretty cool. At least I think it would. The pattern comes with four different sizes. I use the I have a large a larger head, so I use the largest size on the pattern and it fit perfectly. Keep in mind when you when you measure around your head where the hat will sit, allow an extra inch if you can, you know, for hair or a scarf or whatever. Or basically a finger's width between your head. and the hat because you don't want it so tight that it's going to leave marks on your head at least i don't like them like that okay all sewn down. I'll have to look at that, Sandra. I'll update that if that link's not in there. It might be from the last video or maybe yesterday's video. I know I have a wool pressing mat on one of those videos. Okay. So there's the, those those two are done to that stage. Let's check our directions that came with to make sure I do this right. Next, we are going to clip that seam we just did, just like we did on the brim. We're gonna clip it. That's the next step. We have to clip those two seams, just like before. We're just gonna clip it up to the seam allowance. I'm 
going to trim off one layer. There we go. There we go. So I think that'll work pretty good that way. That was not in the instructions. All I did along that seam right there, I clipped one layer of that seam to about an eighth of an inch away from the seam line. And you can see it's clipped there, there, there. So good to go. We're just going to go all the way around it. I'm going basically about half an inch up to the stitching line, but not over into it. I'm just, this is called clipping a curve. Okay. What happens when you turn it, it'll lay super flat, but we are going to top stitch this down as well. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. <clears throat> Coming up to my other side of that seam, just like before. I'm going to trim off one layer of those where those two seams meet. Okay. They're like that. You can see that right there. See how I just clipped that? Okay. You can clip these if you want to. I'm just doing a straight clip up into it. It's worked well for me so far. If after I turned it, I saw it wasn't laying how I wanted it, nice and smooth, that is the point that I would. Um, actually go back and put in some V's if I had to. Usually you don't have to. On a thinner, sheerer fabric, that's especially where that would come in into play more often. And one more. That one's all trimmed. You give my hand a rest, it's one of the crap. <laughs> As you can see there, there that is. And it's all clipped all the way around the entire perimeter. This is actually the top of the hat. Right there. Then when you turn it, See here, I'm just turning it out. You want the seam to lay flat against this because then we will top stitch right along the edge of that seam like we previously did. But I'm gonna wait until I get the other one sewn down because that's this is where that free arm should come in handy. Will it fit? Will it go up there? No. Nope, you won't need to. The free arm yeah, we're going to take it off and try it anyway when once we get to that point. <clears throat> I'm just opening that seam up, pulling it apart just a little bit so it lays super nice and flat. There we go. Now we're going to do the other one. Same, same deal. Clippy clip, clipping the seam. Oh yes, there are tons of opportunities to do, add embroidery to this. The, the brim would be a great place, the sides of the hat here, because this is what goes up the side of your head, this part right here. Okay. Yes, Patty, I 100% agree. A lot of ways to embellish this hat with embroidery or patches, just so many different ways. <coughs> Excuse me. And 
we're just clipping our curve. It'll make it lay so much flatter. Also helps eliminate some bulk, especially on this heavy denim, my goodness. Okay, come here you. We're gonna trim you up a little bit. There we go. Come on. Oh, you're being testy. There we go. Now I can get you. There we go. Okay. It's really important to have a pair of scissors with super strong, sharp tips because that's what I'm using to clip with, just the very tip of the scissor. Wonderful, Patty. There's another hat pattern on there as well. But I picked this one because, and most of their, their, a lot of their patterns when it comes to some of the clothing and stuff is unisex. Not all of it is, of course, but we're gonna make this a, sh I think next, the next pattern I buy from there and download is gonna be for a shirt. Okay, so there's the next one. So, once again, I'm just going to open it up. <clears throat> Before I do that, once I get this open up, I'm going to switch to, to my face cam. And I'm going to show you what this, how this will give you a great idea of what this actually does here. Hold on. Hello there. So this is the top. This is the band that goes around the hat. If you just put it on, this is where this actually goes like this. So then the other part, of course, when we sew it on right here. That'll be our brim. Okay. Okay. So. Next step, I'm going to press it or not. I don't think I need really need to press this one. Let me go back to this camera. What I'm going to do, I'm going to top stitch right along the edge of this seam, making sure that my, my seam allowance is going down. It's pointed down from here to here. And then I'm going to top stitch right along that edge. I hope that made sense. Okay. And now, right there. And it's, it's, what it's easier to do if you have it turned inside out like that, <clears throat> then when you open it up, you can put your hand down there and push those seams to one side. And I'm just going to stitch fairly close to the edge of that. Same stitch settings as before. And this is top stitching again, everybody. I'm going to take my time. As it feeds up, I'm just pulling my seams gently apart with my fingers. Here we go. That way it'll lay nice and flat. Remember, we 
got two of these to do. right there on the scene line, just helping it along a little bit. There we go. And this really helps lay that scene down nice and flat and adds more strength to the scene as well. This would be the type of hat you could just throw in the washing machine, then put an air dryer or put it on a gentle dry on the cycle. When I get done with this seam, I'm going to bring it over to the camera and show you what it looks like both on the inside and outside. We're almost back to the beginning. Just back it up a couple of stitches and cut the thread. Okay. So, if we look on, this is the wrong side here, okay? Check it out. See how it's all laying down? And you know, that one, that's okay. It's all pointed down towards, <clears throat> down to this way, down to this bottom. This is where we'll attach it to the brim right here. Your seam should be pointed down towards where the brim will be. Okay? On the right, on the other side, let's see if you can see that. Hold on, let it focus in. There we go. Right there is that seam where I top stitched. Nice and neat. It really gives a nice professional finish to it. So, Patty, the foot I'm using is the J foot. And if you'll notice, what I'm using for this, for this one, there's the, oop, the foot I'm using right there. I'm using this slit right here where the metal meets the plastic as a place to line up the edge along the seam so I stitch about an eighth of an inch away from it. That's the foot I'm using. Okay. But that one's done. Now we have to do the other one. Here we go. Now we're gonna top stitch number two down. Same way. Okay. Now then, just like before, and we'll have that seam going out down towards the brim as much as possible all the way through. And where the metal meets the plastic over here on this side of the foot, I'm laying that right on top where the two seams match, and that's what I'm using. How I'm keeping the distance throughout the same. I haven't changed the position of the needle or the length of the stitch. I'm just using a different mark to use as a seam guide to get my stitching fairly even all the way around the edge of the hat. If any of you have like an accomplish, that would be a great machine to do this on as well. All you're using is a straight stitch for the entire hat. You could use any machine with a straight stitch for this. Just go 
going around in a circle. Oops, that camera didn't like the vibration from that. <laughs> There we go. Camera decided to take a little bit of a nose dive to the wool pressing mat. It's all okay. Those little webcams are fairly indestructible for the most part. Okay, almost back to where I started from on this one. Right? Yes. Almost there. And that one's done. Alrighty. Now, next, <clears throat> we have to, dis we are going to make sure I say this right before I open my mouth. Okay. I'm just reading my instructions real quick to to actually refresh my memory on this because I don't want to say it improperly or anything like that. Okay, so whichever one is your outside fabric, we're next going to press <clears throat> We're going to turn it over approximately the seam allowance, approximately one centimeter, and we're going to press it all the way around this opening. Okay. Make sure the iron's good and hot. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to put a couple of clips in here. So that we can just go a little bit quicker by doing a preliminary couple of clippies in right at one centimeter seam allowance. Am I going to measure it? No, I can pretty much eyeball it by looking at where my seam here is, how much the distance. This is a very forgiving pattern, everybody. Oops. There we go. <laughs> Let me adjust the height of that again since it had a little bit of a tumble. There we go. What I'm saying, I'm just turning that under about the same, about approximately one centimeter, just like our seam allowances. <coughs> I'm putting a few clips in all the way around before I, before I pick up the iron and press it. I want to press that really good. I'm just doing it to the, uh, the main fabric or the outside fabric and not the lining fabric. Just this one piece is what we're going to do this with. There we go. Okay. Then, all the way around. There we go. Let me get it good and hot because I want it to stay down pretty good. I'm going to put a good crease on that. And you'll see why this is important. This will be the last thing we stitch onto our hat and then it will be done. We've actually, everybody, we only have um, two more seams and then one piece of top stitching to do and this hat will be complete. Truly. Just lower that, get that down. Yeah, 
this is a wonderful little iron. It comes, actually, it is kind of portable. It comes, ooh, in its own carrying case. The, it's a clear plastic lid with a handle on it that fits over the base and um, the iron itself. Okay. Well, that one was a little bit wide. I'm going to retouch that one up. It got off right there. That was just too wide. Looks much better right there. Okay, so that pressing part is done, and then we're going to turn it <clears throat> so that the good side, the right side of the fabric is out like this. Okay, we're just going to turn it, and then we'll set the, to that to the side and move on to the next step. Okay, so on the next step, this is our inside fabric or our lining fabric. We want to turn that one wrong side out. Yay, I kind of remember how to do this. <laughs> I think once you make a couple of these, you could make them even production style and work on quite a few at the same time. Then we're going to take our brim. And on this one, I want to make sure I match. Let's see here. Yes. This, this would go to the inside of that so it would match. <clears throat> you want to pin, pin it so the wrong side, the wrong side of this piece goes to the right side of the main fabric underneath. In other words, exactly like this. So you're going to have like three layers of denim you're going to pin through. Just a second here. Lay it down on the inside like that. Super duper easy to see. And this one that I am going to actually clip. Because that is some serious layers it's going to be going through. Once again, we will be using that one centimeter. The one centimeter um, thingy. A one centimeter seam allowance. I was reading the instructions and trying to talk at the same time because I don't want to tell you the wrong way to do this. Okay. So, right there. That way, my two seam lines are now aligned. Okay. These others should just line up super duper easy. side is that right hold on let me I gotta think about something here make sure I'm doing this correctly do 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 because if I do that then that would go like that that would be over there nope 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 I got that backwards Got that backwards. It's always nice when you catch it before, it has to go like this, okay? Wrong side. Hold on. It goes like that? No. <laughs> I think I had it right, everybody. I think I just took that apart for nothing. Let me think on this for a second. <laughs> That would be right if I turned it out. Then no. Right? Right. No, I want it this way. I had that correct, I think. I think if I 
turn it around like that. Yeah. Oh, Lordy, let me think here. My brain stopped working. Let me read these instructions again. Place the right side of the lining top band against the lining side of the brim. Okay, place the right side of the lining top band against the lining side of the brim. So, it actually go like this. Nope, I got it now. I'll actually go like this. Okay, here's my lining side. Right side, so here's the lining side. It will go like this right here. Duh. This is act this is 100 percent the proper way right now. <laughs> I had it reversed. Okay, right side of the lining band and top, which is this piece, against the lining side of the brim. And then we're gonna clip it and we're gonna stitch our one centimeter seam allowance all the way around. Are those working better? Got some big clip. Oh, I think that's better than the small ones. We're gonna go. Ahead. Small ones don't get quite hardly enough bite on all of this fabric. At least they're over the seams anyway. There we go. One more in there. It's all lining up just like it's supposed to. Now that I read the directions properly, <laughs> when in doubt, everybody, read the directions. Read them more than once. <laughs> it's all good. It's a beautiful day. A beautiful day. Tonight we are having an all-American dinner. It's called pizza. <laughs> there. There it is. So that is the proper way. Notice if we pull it over like this, there is the right side of the band and top against the right side of the lining. Okay. Correct side, correct side. Okay. Now we just have to do our one centimeter seam all the way around that. That camera. I'm gonna check the check the um, do to do, do. What am I gonna check? I'm gonna check the message board. See if there's any questions. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Patty. Okay. So next is a drink of tea. Some like crystal light. So now I'm back to lining up my seam with my laser guide that I set up at one centimeter. And let's see, I'm gonna do it like this. <clears throat> I'm gonna put the brim down and the the band and the top on the inside. It'll just, I think, run smoother that way. We'll see. Get everything lined up nice and neat. 
lower that presser foot. Then we'll lower the needle. Then we'll take out one of my clips. And we're just going to do our one centimeter seam all the way around. And I can tell you on this machine anyway, that J foot, that one centimeter is pretty much lining up right with the right edge of that J foot. Now, not all J foots are created equal. <laughs> So make sure you measure. Just don't take my word for it that your machine's J foot is the same as what I have. Because there's more than one size of J foot through different models of machines. Okay. be making more hats in the future. <clears throat> I'm actually working on my own pattern, but I just didn't have time to get that done for this video that I wanted to do. I want to get something out there so everybody can make them a nice summer bucket hat. This will make a nice camping hat, fishing hat, gardening hat, or just a a cute embellished hat to wear out for whatever purpose. It's all good. I like hats, so I always have. You know, sometimes it's just a say something hat day. Okay, get some, deal with some bulk right here. There we go. We're almost got this part sewed down. And that's all done. Now, once again, we're gonna clip, we're gonna clip our seam just like we've done before, before we move to the next step. Gonna take our time and clip it good. I'm gonna do it this way because it's easier to see with my, my thread and fabric here. Just right up to the seam about every half inch. some of the excess, one layer of the excess of that double seam there. Come on, lay up there, you. I'm just going to cut you just a little bit. It's a little bit of a twim. There we go. Clipping the curve, clipping the curve. There's a lot of clipping the curves for this, this project. This is the last one we're gonna have to clip. Literally everybody counting this one, not counting clipping this curve here. There's only one, two more sewing steps to go. And it will be complete. And yes, when it's done, I will model it for you so you can see what it looks like. The other hat pattern on that website I think would be assembled exactly the same way. 
It just the dimensions of the brim is different. It's a shorter, not as wide of a brim. That will probably be, that's gonna be the next hat that I do. And I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. It's also a bucket hat. This one is called the Serpentine hat pattern. Excuse me. of it clipped I think yes okay moving right along clipping right up to that seam we just sewed but not over it or into it right up to it <clears throat> You will need a good sharp pair of scissors to do this, especially if you're doing it out of denim, as I am. I showed last week how to cut apart a pair of jeans and all that fun stuff and how to cut out all the pieces. That is quite honestly the most time consuming part for this project. As you've seen, it goes to bed together fairly quickly once you've got that part done. There. Go. <clears throat> so there we go. That is all clipped all the way around that seam. Now we're going to put our hat, hat up like this and we're going to press this seam up and flat. We're going to press it this way, okay? We want this seam going up towards the top of the hat. Press it up all the way around. As best you can. <clears throat> For the next step, I am going to use straight pins. And you'll see why here in just a moment. Ooh, that part's really bulky. Super duper bulky. Okay, get this all pressed. Now you can see if I put that up, push that back out again. That seam is going to naturally go up towards the top of that hat now. Okay, so look on the inside. The inside's complete. Okay, that's the lining side. But if you use denim, re this hat is 100. You can wear it, reverse it. It's double sided. So here, remember on this piece, we turned that under our seam allowance and pressed. Here's the magic. It just fits right over the top of it. like so. And then we're going to pin it, bringing the edge right down to that seam allowance. Okay, we're going to make sure that that goes like that. See this? Line up that ed raw edge there with this raw edge here. And then we're going to put a pin right there. Oops. I'm getting my magnetic pin cushion over closer. <laughs> That's just all the noise you heard there. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to do this on camera. Okay, 
and I'm going to match the seams. That should keep me pretty good all the way around. Right there. Right there is going to be my first one. Yes, that was me. I stuck my finger under there. <laughs> Have another go with that. That is super bulky right there, everybody. <coughs> we are going to use a, ow, a longer stitch um, when sewing down this seam. So what we're going to do, we're going to repeat, go all the way around and put us a pin in place so we can make this part fit over the previous part all the way around. Okay, I'm only going to put like four pins in it just to hold it in place because then we're going to top stitch right along that edge. There. There. There we go. See how that will look? Come down over this way, line up this seam. Should have done that first, probably. I may have to take that one pin out. We'll see. But once you get it under the presser foot, you're going to keep lining it up, even though it has pins in it. Take that out for just a sec. There we go. getting there. So what you're actually doing, you're fitting that raw edge up underneath this turned edge and we're fitting it with pins so it'll lay nice and flat and all that good stuff. And we're doing this whole process in just one stitch, one seam, one set of top stitching all the way around this edge. Get up in there, you. In there. The denim is a little bit harder to work with than I thought it would be, but that's okay. I think it'd look really cool to have like one side denim and the other side a real cool quilting fabric. I think I'd really look nice. Here we go. I'm just going to take my time, make sure this is all nice and lined up before I start stitching. Adjust, take pins out and adjust it as I need to because you got one go with this, everybody. <laughs> but unless you want to rip out stitches. So I'm just, what I'm doing, I'm fitting it to make sure it doesn't have no pleats. Mm or anything like that in it. Because once I get this under the presser foot, I want it to be nice and smooth. And you 
you know what, that looks pretty darn good to me. But there that is. See how that is all pinned in? Okay, let's go to the other camera. Get these out of my way. Oops. Move this over here. I'm just going to move that out of the way also because now this is where the free arm will come in handy, I think. Move my extension table. Okay, move those to the side, pattern pieces. Now, I can just put that right under there, nice and easy. And this time I'm lining up, lining up where the seam is, the fold is, right here on the opposite side where the two edges meet, where the metal meets the plastic edge on this J foot. Basically, you want it approximately one eight, between one eighth and a quarter inch away. Whatever you like, as long as you do it. This is going to hold it all together. Okay, are we ready? Let's go up to two and a half inches on this one. I mean, 2.5 millimeter on the stitch length on this. Oh, hi, Kathy. Happy Fourth of July to you as well. And everybody, this is the last seam for this. So guess what? When I finish this seam, this hat is completely done and ready to wear. Okay. I'm not gonna take that pin all the way out until it gets further under that presser foot. Okay, I will take it out now. I would normally sew over that pin with all of those layers I'm not going to do that. Just taking my time, guiding it as I go. I will risk it on that one and take it out a little bit early. It's really stitching through it nice and neat. Here's going to be the hardest part. We'll have to go really slow underneath where all these seams match up because this part right here is super duper thick. Just going to go slow. Machine's going right over it just fine and dandy. Okay. almost halfway done everybody on this seam. Make sure that's got to come down a little bit. There we go. Looking real good, woohoo! All righty. Sure, that's down, covering that. So the edge of that folded fabric, you want it right over the top of the previous line of stitching, or just a little bit below it, and that'll make it fit nice and perfectly together. Ooh, that's a lot of bulk right there on that one. Ooh, ooh doggy. Let's go over it now. Second big bulky seam. Just, oops. So, the safety device was just activated. It hit the wrong thing. And I'm going to probably have to turn it back off and on. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to try it again. 
That's fine. So that was a super bulky seam. I'm gonna ease it back just a hair. Oh, I see why. There we go. Now let's give it a shot. There we go. Boy, it doesn't like that area, does it? It's okay. It's not hurt anything. Just gonna raise that up and feed it through a little bit. Okay, I'm going to hand pull it through. Right there is where it's at. Okay, fill a hard spot right there. There it went through. I'm just going to hand pull it across. So if that happens, don't freak out. You haven't heard anything. And there, now I got over the. What that does. It, it beeps, it tells you it's activated a safety switch. That just means you need to check how thick that is and help the machine by manually turning the hand wheel till you get past that rough spot. That's all that was. It's all good. See, still working just fine. Okay. And we're almost to where we began from. We started from. After it did that, though, I tell you, I will replace this needle now that it did that. Almost there. And back it up a little bit. Press that. And guess what, everybody? This bucket hat is now complete. Yes. So, you there. If I turn it inside out, check this side out. Which I planned on using this, this part for the side that would be worn anyway. But there you go, you get two hats in one. If it was two different fabric fabrics, you'd have two different hats in one. So I'm gonna to switch to my front cam. Hello there. And here's what it looks like. We'll do it this way first. So, great fishing hat, gardening hat, has a big brim. And see, it's got, it because it's denim, it really does have um, a nice firmness to it. So if I take that off and turn it inside out, you'll see what the other side looks like. Put on. There we go. And there's that side there. So different colored denim on each side. You could put it up like that if you wanted to. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? So that's how you make a bucket hat. And it really was not that difficult to do, don't you think? One bucket hat. Woohoo. Be great make, make a great beach hat also, everybody. You might not want it out of denim if you're going to the beach, but a nice beach hat. You could totally do some embroidery here on this band or even on the brim. But there you go, easy peasy bucket hat made out of two pairs of recycled denim. All I did, I cut out the legs of two pairs of jeans and used that for my to cut my pieces out of. All righty, woo wee. So everybody, thank you. That's it, and wasn't that fun? I expect each one of you to make a bucket hat and show us a picture of it. If you email that picture to me, I will post it in. <coughs> I will post those photos if you want that done, but you don't have to do that. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. I will see you this coming week um, on Friday and Saturday and Sunday again. 
And have a happy, wonderful 4th of July, everybody. Enjoy the fireworks. And above all, stay cool and stay safe.